Welcome back to Torah in 10, Parshas Noach. I'm Jody Burkell, and I'm so excited to be here with you again. Rabbi Sachs of Blessed Memory shares such a relevant idea with us this week. He says, next time you meet someone very different than you, try to see the difference not as a threat, but as an enlarging, possibly life-creating gift. That's a tall order, especially these days. But as we learned last week, more than we have faith in God, God has faith in us. Last week, we read about creation. This week, we read about its almost total destruction. With the exception of Noah, his family, two sets of all the animals and seven sets of kosher animals, God begins again. We have to ask the question, what went so terribly wrong? In Bereshis, we read how God created man in his image. In this Parsha, we read something similar, but the message is different. The Torah tells us, whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God, he made man. Did you catch the change? In Bereshis, we learn, says Rabbi Sachs, that I am made in the image of God. In Parshas Noah, we learn that the other person is made in the image of God too. In Bereshis, we read about the power of human beings over the earth. And this week, we learn that we cannot use that power over others because of the sanctity of all lives, not just our own. God has transformed the terms of our relationship. After the flood, he taught Noah and through him all of humanity that we shouldn't think of ourselves alone as made in the image of God, but to include others as well. That says Rabbi Sachs is the only way to save ourselves from violence and self-destruction. This means that the greatest religious challenge is, can I see God's image in those who are not in my image, whose way of thinking and whose way of life is different from mine? That's Rabbi Sachs's challenge to us because people are afraid of those unlike them. This has been the source of violence throughout history because the other is seen as a threat. But Rabbi Sachs asks us, what if the people not like us enlarge us rather than threaten our world? Here's something interesting to think about. As Jews, everyone knows we're constantly eating. And so we're constantly making blessings on our food. There's a strange blessing that we say after eating or drinking something that we made a shahakol over. It goes, God creates many souls and their deficiencies. So why are we thanking God for making us deficient? Listen to the beautiful answer Rabbi Sachs gives us. He says, if we had no deficiencies and therefore we lacked nothing, we would never need anyone else. Has anyone ever wondered why when God made the world, he didn't make everyone healthy, everyone rich and everyone perfect? I mean, God could do that. Why didn't he? If God did do that, what would he need us for? We are here to partner with God and through the mitzvot, fix the world and each other. The fact that we're all different, that we all have deficiencies means that we need each other. What you lack, I may have. What I lack, you may have. We don't compete with each other. We complete each other. Remember from Jerry Maguire, you complete me. Do you see how life-changing this idea can be? After the flood, and to avoid a world filled with violence that led to the flood in the first place, God asks us to see his image in one who is not in our image. Adam knew that he was made in the image of God. Noah and his descendants are commanded to remember that the other person, no matter how different, is made in the image of God as well. We're living in times that are in complete conflict with this idea. We have things like cancel culture. We have extreme censorship. We have silencing of dissenting views. Our social media is filtered in such a way that shows us only the posts of similar interests and topics, things that don't come into conflict with our views. So we only hear from people who share our opinions. Did you know that? 
Next time we meet someone very different than us, we should try and see the difference not as a threat, but as an opportunity for growth. It's a tall order. I think we're up to the challenge. Wishing you all a Shabbat Shalom.